we're going to walk you through how to take a uh, your finished model, your finished house model here, and get it to add the dimensions and the labeling for this. So you should have your finished part two house. We you got your dimensions, your regular dimensions here, your 12 by 30 and your 20 by 10. You should have the peak here of the roof done with the six inch eaves your door and window, and you should have the trim that goes all the way around your house, even onto the back. So you should have that roof overhang and the trim all the way around. You may or may not have added some decoration to the house like I have here. It's okay if you didn't, uh, totally fine. We are gonna add some dimensions to this first. So uh, if you look at your tool sheet, you'll see the dimensions are in the pop-up window. So we gotta go down here to the bottom of the menu, click the three dots, and we're gonna go here to the dimensions tool. It has the two red dots in the line. It says dimensions. In order to be accurate for everybody, when we do the dimensions, we're gonna zoom in here. We're gonna do this bottom edge of the roof. So not the bottom of the eaves, but the actual roof face itself, where it comes down to this corner, so the bottom edge of the roof surface. So to use the dimensions, uh, you're just clicking on endpoints. So you gotta make sure it says that green dot and endpoint here. So you're gonna click once and let go. You move your mouse to this other corner here, click once and let go. And then using my mouse, I'm gonna scroll back because I want it to go up on the blue axis. So you see the blue dotted line. We're gonna bring it up above the roof just a little bit. Okay, so you're gonna kind of be zooming in and out with your uh, scroll wheel while we do this. So we're keeping our tool active. We're gonna come down to this corner. You wanna make sure it says endpoint and not the move. So you're gonna go endpoint again, click and release, kind of scroll out and then come to this corner of the roof, click and release push your mouse forward up on the blue and it should you see here how it snaps to match that other measurement once you get there you click so we have our 10 and our 10 we're just going to kind of go all the way around the house so click this bottom corner of the roof come over to this bottom corner of the roof surface on the front and again push forward on your mouse until it is level with the other two that one should be 20 feet. We're going to continue that all the way around the rest of the house. So this front corner again to this back corner. Push it up. That one should be 22 feet. We'll go to our back one. Again, this corner. Oops, see how I accidentally did the move there. So click endpoint. Going to go down to this endpoint here. Push forward so that it matches up. So that should be 30 feet. And then our last one is gonna be 12 feet. So we're gonna go zooming in to make sure we're on the correct endpoint here. Gonna go this endpoint to this endpoint. I went a little too far. And you can zoom back, push up so it goes on the blue axis. So now if you look at it, you should have all the sides measured. We want to make sure then, once you have those lines done, those measurements done, that you position your camera like this. You're gonna orbit your camera so that you can see the front of the house with the door and window, the side here, this little corner of the house here. I should be able to see that you've made the angle of the roof kind of push in and that you got trim all the way around. What we're gonna adjust then is uh, our dimensions. So what we're gonna do, we want just a little bit of a gap. So we want as little wasted space as possible, but the numbers need to be above the roof. It's gonna print in black and white, so if you have roofing tiles on or shingles, you're not gonna see the numbers if they're not above it. So what we're gonna do with the dimensions tool still active, as you can see, still active, I'm gonna put my cursor on that number, it's like the 10, I'm gonna click and drag it, so we are actually dragging it here. And we're gonna put it just above the roof. So from this camera angle, there's a little gap and I can clearly see it. Now I'm gonna click and release and then click it in place again. 
I'm going to go around all the rest of these now and lower them down so that they're the same level as the uh, new ones I just lowered. So now I've got my house and I have my measurements. Okay, That's very important. Once you have that, save it. The next thing we're going to do is add your name and class period label. So we got to go back to our toolbar by clicking the three dots and we're going to use the text tool. You'll see it highlighted there. Text, it has the A1. We are going to put it on the end point of this roof peak right here. So you're going to click once. And you're going to move just off to the side and click a second time. And what you're going to do is highlight that out and type in your first name, your last name, and then your period number. So it's your first name, your last name, and your period number. So don't type first, last, type your first name and last name and then whatever period. So P1, P2, P3, or P4. Once you have that typed in, you're just gonna click off to the side and now you'll see you have your name label here right next to the house. From that point, save it one more time. The model itself is done. Now we have to prepare it for doing your document. So to do that, we're going to take a screenshot of this. When you do your screenshot, you're going to use these key controls. You're going to hold Control and Shift at the same time, and then press the Show Windows button, which you see there is a square with the two lines. The Show Windows button is just above the number 6 on your keyboard. So hold Control and Shift, and then tap Show Windows. So on your uh, Chromebook, you're going to do the following commands. It's Control plus Shift, so you hold those at the same time, and the Show Windows button, which is right above the number 6 on your keyboard. It looks like the square with two lines to the right of it. So Control, Shift, Show Windows. You're going to get a prompt up there that tells you to draw the outline. I'm on a Mac, so it looks slightly different. But what you're going to do is basically draw the select box nice and tight around your model so it has all of the measurements and it just has the whole house. So you can see how at the very top it just catches that dimensions bracket. At the bottom it just catches that corner of the house and it's the width where it just has the dimensions in the house and then my name. Okay. Once you have that you're going to click capture and you're going to take the screenshot it is going to save that to your downloads folder and that's important to know where that goes. I'm on a Mac so it's on my desktop but on your Chromebook you'll do the control shift show windows drag the box around it and click capture it saves it to your downloads. Once you have that taken you're going to go back to your Google Classroom tab for class just to get into the Google part, you're going to go to the waffle in the upper right hand corner here, the apps right next to your picture, your profile, and you're going to make a new doc. So go to classroom, click on the waffle, you're going to go to docs. You're going to make a blank doc. So first thing you want to do is set up the assignment title so you know what it is because you're going to have to know the name of this to print it later next week. So you're going to call it SketchUp Part 2 Print. So SketchUp Part 2 Print is, should be the title of it. It is again right here, SketchUp Part 2 Print. Before we put anything on it, we want to set it up so it can take the biggest picture on their paper. So we're going to go to File and scroll down to Page Setup. File, Page Setup. First thing we're going to do is change your page to landscape, meaning it's going to go side to side instead of up and down. And we also need to change the margins so that we can fit a bigger image. So we're going to change it from 1 inch margins to 0.5 or half inch margins. So the easy way to do that is you double click to highlight it, type in 0.5. And then to go even faster you can hit the tab key which is in the upper left of the keyboard just down below the escape. So you tab on the bottom, make it 0.5. On the left side, make it 0.5. And the right side, make it 0.5. So before you click OK, make sure you have landscape and then 0.5 margins on all of them. Once you have that, click OK. 
Now your whole sheet is on here sideways. I'll make it a little smaller so you can see it. Now the whole page is going sideways here. The first thing you're gonna do on your paper is type your first and last name and period number, period number again. So your first name, your last name, and your period number. So your first and last name, period one, two, three, or four. And then you wanna hit enter to make sure that your line goes down. And of course I double capitalize. So we need to make sure once you get done, you hit enter so your cursor is below your name to be down here. That way when you put the picture on, it stays up there. Okay, next step you're gonna do is insert your picture from the downloads. So there's a nice shortcut right here on your thing. So you see the it says insert image. We're gonna click that and you do upload from computer. So the insert image looks like a picture of mountains. Upload from computer. And for you guys, it's gonna be over here in your downloads folder on this left menu. And it should say screenshot and then the time you took it from just a few minutes ago. For mine, it's on my desktop. So I'm gonna take that screenshot and you're gonna put that into your paper. You wanna make it as big as you can. So if you notice on your document, you have the blue triangle at 10 inches. That is the limit on the right side of your paper. On the left side, you have it kind of grays out at seven and a half inches here. So you wanna make your image as big as you can, but you have to keep it in scale. Don't just stretch it out to fill it because it'll look weird. So you're only gonna grab this bottom corner if it's at a diagonal. So you can grab that bottom corner and you're gonna bring it as close to the margin as you can without going over. So you see here, I'm right next to that margin marker with the blue triangle. Down here, I'm a little ways away. I'm almost an inch away. That's okay. You wanna to go to whichever margin is closest without going over. If you drag it down past the bottom margin, it's gonna make it a whole new page and it needs to fit on one single page. So I should have my first and last name and the period number, and I should have my image as big as it can be on the paper while still keeping the correct sizing and scaling. You should see all of your measurements and your first and last name period number on the picture. Once you have that, then we're done. We're gonna bring this and pull it in next class to print it, okay? So make sure you've set up, you have SketchUp Part 2 Print is the title. You have your first and last name and period number typed up top. And your image as big as it can go to whichever margin it's closest to without going past it here. So once you have that, it should auto save and you can continue on with whatever work you've been assigned, okay? Good job, help each other out if you need it. Thanks. Bye.